Hi, this is Worth Godwin, worthgodwin.com. Plain English simplicity for a complex modern world. In this video, I want to talk about Bitcoin, and I want to give a basic introduction and overview of what Bitcoin is and answer the question, what is Bitcoin? Because I see that it's not very well understood yet, uh, because in part it's so new to the public consciousness, and it is far more than what most people think it is. Now, a lot of people, if you ask them what is Bitcoin, they will say, well, it's a, it's a currency. Or they will say it's a payment system. And both of those answers are basically right, but they're also incomplete. Now, fundamentally speaking, what Bitcoin is, is a set of protocols. And a protocol is just a set of rules. Uh, if you think of military protocol or diplomatic protocol, what is that? Well, it is just a set of rules of do these things in this sequence at, in these, in the, with this timing to get a result. So I think that fundamentally speaking, the Bitcoin protocols are equivalent, maybe not an exact precise function, but they're equivalent in significance to the underlying protocols which drive the internet. And there's something called TCP IP, which are, it's actually a pair of protocols, TCP and IP. And the two of them together are, essentially speaking, the fundamental underpinnings of everything to do with the internet. And then things like web pages or video, watching streaming video or what have you, these are all specific applications of protocols which were built upon a layer upon the TCP IP layer. So there you have layers of protocols. And what we're talking about with Bitcoin is really that another fundamental layer starting something entirely new, just as TCP IP started something entirely new by effectively creating the internet. So it's important to remember that Bitcoin as a currency or Bitcoin as a payment system, these are just, these are not what the Bitcoin is. They are applications of the technology, but they're not the whole of the technology. They're just specific uses of it, just as a web page or a website is a specific use or application of the internet and the underlying protocols of the internet and those that are layered upon it. Right now, what it does, and the purpose of it, why it was created, was to, to solve as a technological solution to what's called the double spend problem. Now, if you, let's just say you have a checkbook, and you write a check to somebody, let's say you have $100 in your bank account, and you write a check for $100, and you send it to somebody, and then you write a check to somebody else, also for $100, and you send it to the second person. That is a double spend. You're spending your, the same amount of money twice, and it's more than you actually have. And the only way the recipient knows that this has happened is, and that they can't spend the money because they don't actually have the money, is through a centralized authority or a centralized system called a bank or a banking system or a series of banks. And those are cent that's centralization. We have to rely upon a bank to tr and trust them to spend money. And the way the world works at this point in time, uh, pr at least prior to the advent of the Bitcoin protocols, is we have to rely upon banks. And this pos puts them in a position of tremendous power and a position of tremendous profitability. So the bank is making money for somebody spending money and for somebody receiving money. And so they make money both ways something that is so fundamental to our lives and so critical to our lives, currency and, and the ability to, to make financial transactions, we didn't have to rely upon a third party for that back way, way, way back in the past. But for centuries we have, and especially in modern day, in the modern day we really have to rely upon third parties, or we always have. Uh, and Bitcoin basically solves that problem by being decentralized and trustless. So what does that mean? Decentralization, of course, uh, it's just really, it's basically the opposite of what I've been talking about. So 
uh, right now, uh, in the state of in the way the world is these days, and the way it has been for some quite some time, we have to rely upon central authorities to say that such and such is money. Like, for example, the U.S. dollar is money, and that's that is something called fiat money. It's it is by decree is what it literally means, and it, essentially the U.S. government says it's money, therefore it's money, and that's the only reason it's money, is because we accept that. Um, and banks produce the money, and banks control the flow of money, and the money can only flow through banks. Even if you're dealing with cash, it still comes from a bank at some point. And the U.S. government, for example, declares that it's currency, but does not actually make it. They pay the Federal Reserve to print the money, and then we, the, we, the collective people of the United States, owe the Federal Reserve for the money that we use, and we have to pay them back with that same money, which creates a never-ending cycle of debt, essentially. And if you add on credit card fees and things like that, it, it gets to the point of insanity. And that all happens because of centralization. And I think that one of the overriding principles that I personally find so exciting about technology is the way that it, it seems to progressively, in most cases, not all cases necessarily, but in many cases it causes this progressive tendency or trend towards decentralization, which tends to uh, empower individuals while lessening the power, that the centralized power structures that are traditional. And I, I, I think that's kind of cool. That may be just me, but I think it's pretty darn cool. And basically, it empowers us to be the network. If you have a computer that's running a wallet software, uh, and the wallet software is just, that's, that's the, uh, just like if you have cash, physical cash, you put it into a wallet with Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, you put that into a wallet, which is a, a program. And you can send and receive money, and by running the wallet, you are forming part of the network. And if you are mining Bitcoin or mining one of the other currencies, that is uh, that mining in the sense of like mining for gold. It's a metaphor. What you're doing is you're actually powering the network, and the mining process is running essentially very specialized math problems that proves that a transaction is real and legitimate. And then once it's been proved, it gets added to a blockchain. And a blockchain is a public ledger system. And again, the, and the public ledger system, it's decentralized. Anyone can have a copy of it, anyone can look at it, and thus anyone can verify transactions by just looking for them. You don't necessarily know who sent the money to whom, but you can verify the transaction happened and the amount of the transaction. Anyone can do this. That makes it trustless. No one needs to trust a third party, like a bank, to maintain the ledger. We all maintain the ledger, and we're all powering the network instead of the banks owning the physical network of computers that allow for payments to happen. We have the power instead of a central authority. So it's decentralized, and it's trustless because we don't have to rely upon somebody else. We can verify it ourselves. But fundamentally speaking, it's a set of protocols set of rules of behavior for software for computers and computing devices which allows for any two people to do a transaction a financial transaction of some form without relying upon a centralized third party who we have to trust there's no trust required because we can verify it ourselves and there's no uh, we are empowered essentially by the fact that it's decentralized and that is the gist of what Bitcoin is. It's much more than a payment system. It's much more than a currency. And we will, we're, we're only just at the beginning of this. And we're going to see 20 years from now, we'll look back and have seen so many changes. And it will all kind of started here. Just the same way as we now look back on 20 years ago to the beginning of the web and the modern internet as we know it. And how many things have changed and how, how, how it thoroughly permeates our lives and how many ways that it has benefited us, um, the countless ways. And so that's basically what Bitcoin is, just real 
fundamental level. And uh, let me know what your questions are, and I will I will be going into much more detail about specific things I've talked about here and other things I haven't even mentioned yet in my other lessons. So once again, this is Worth Godwin, WorthGodwin.com, Plain English Simplicity for a Complex Modern World. Thanks for watching.